Have you ever wanted to put a creative project out in the world in a short amount of time and actually done it? I haven't, but I have someone here who has. Today, he'll teach you how to stop overthinking, start trusting your instincts, creating, and putting your work out into the world. Welcome to Unleash Your Inner Creative with Lauren LaGrasso. I'm Lauren LaGrasso. I'm a Webby Award-winning podcast host and producer, singer-songwriter, public speaker, creative coach, and multi-passionate creative. And this show sits at the intersection of creativity, mental health, self-development, and spirituality. It is meant to give you tools to love, trust, and know yourself enough to claim your right to creativity and pursue whatever it is that's on your heart. Today, my guest is my boyfriend, Timmy, a.k.a. Timothy Michael Blewett. He's a SAG-AFTRA actor, teacher, writer, and a recently published author. Thank you very much. And today he is here to discuss his brand new book, 1001 Tips for Actors and Artists in Los Angeles, The Do's and Don'ts of Making It in Hollywood. Everybody go buy it. It's available on Amazon. And he's going to be sharing with you how he went from idea to release in just a month and a half. He has great tips on how to not overthink the creative process and how to deal with doubts as you go about marketing and sharing your creative work with the world. So welcome, my love, Timble, a.k.a. Timmy, a.k.a. Timothy. Woo! Thank you for that marvelous introduction. (laughs) I am so pleased to give it to you. (laughs) Thank you for having me back. It's wonderful to be back on the pod again. Oh, it's wonderful to have you back. You're one of my most favorite guests. Thank you. (laughs) I appreciate that. You're up there. (laughs) You've definitely been one of the most frequent ones, too. Yeah. How does it feel? I love it. I love coming on and talking and sharing. It's interesting because like, you have access, obviously, every day to what I'm working on on a day-to-day basis. But I also do feel like I'm going through the motions out in the real world and then coming back and being like, let's talk about this. Let's share it. There's actionable things here to, to share. Yeah, for sure. So that's why you're here today. Yes. So take me into your world. Yes, something very (laughs) actionable. Well, the last time that I was on the podcast, I was talking about the nine to five. Right. The sort of like, how can you still be creative while being in a nine to five? And I think that that really leads into why I'm here again today, because I've been toiling away at my nine to five. And I think I got to a point of just frustration utter Mm. frustration with the nine to five. Not that the job itself is wrong or bad in any way, but just my creative soul was like, I need to do something to keep myself alive. Mm. Okay, quickly pause there because there's people listening who definitely are feeling that. That's why they've come to the show. What were the signs that if you did not make this book, your creative soul would perish? It started manifesting very physically. Yeah. And so I know that that's huge in our cultural zeitgeist right now of like when the body says no, just listening to the body. My eyes were really hurting because I'm like looking at a computer screen all day. I found myself just being fatigued at the end of the day. It would hit 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and I would be exhausted you know, starting at nine. And then all of a sudden in the afternoon, I'm like, I have no energy to do, to think, to even finish out the rest of my afternoon at work. So the the fatigues, feeling it in my eyes, also like my body, I guess, because I'm sitting for most of the day or, you know, I can like get up and walk around and stuff. But most of the job is sedentary. They let you. Yeah. <laughs> they allow me to get up every <laughs> once in a while. But it's so sedentary that like also, you know, I'm feeling it in my sciatica and, and mm. like I'm just like, oh, my body doesn't feel as agile as it used to. And there's there's like strong evidence that when you're walking, when you're moving, when you're using your body, it frees up your mind to be mm. more creative and thoughts come to you more, It just, just in a different manner. Yeah. So I was feeling very closed, very like just closed off to the world, closed off to myself. My body was literally telling me like, hey, you got to make some changes and or do something. It is interesting because ever since you've put it out, I haven't heard you talk about those things as much. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? I have. Yeah. Do you think it's like a causation? I think it is because I I think that, you know, like I my soul was yearning for something else. It was like you've got to do something. And so I really just like buckled down. 
became creative Rocky and like <laughs> went to the goal and created this thing. And all of a sudden there was this resurgence of energy of just like, wow, like I did it. And now, now I need to market it. Now I can talk to people. We were just at a dinner the other night and I was like, I just published a book and it, and it was awesome. You know, it just came out of me. They were like, you know, what, what have you been up to? I just published the book and we just started talking about it. And I want to give that person a free copy and, and just say like, here, if you, if you're interested, if there's anyone that, you know, you can share this around. Yeah. I'd love to take a little sidestep and just like give some people advice because I think a lot of times people, and I've a hundred percent been in this position where you are so burnt out and exhausted by work and you know, that something deeply missing from your life is creativity, but you feel like I do not have another ounce of energy to give anything or anyone. I just need to like lay. And so when you're feeling that level of burnout, how do you incentivize yourself to know that like doing this will actually give you more energy than resting at times? Like, how did you get yourself to do it? Because you were so tired to the point where like you would come home on Friday nights and need like two to three hours mm -hmm. to not do anything at least. Yeah. Yeah. My veg out time. Yeah. I'd be like I just need to veg out and that's not good. Like that's not healthy in any way. Like right. the, working a nine to five or any job should energize you in the first place to keep you going to go after your passion and your dreams. I recognize that that was my fault for not realizing that sooner of like 50% of my day should be, you know, doing my job job. And then the other 50%, I should be energized to bring forth my purpose into the world. Yeah. I mean, and I think that like to take a little bit of victim blaming away, you know, like when you're that tired, it makes sense that your instinct is just to rest because like that is part of the creative process too. Like ideal world, our creativity is our work. If it's not, I think like a good method is like what you've kind of been doing since then, which is like working, making some time for resting and some time for creativity. Mm -hmm. That's what we need in order to feel, I think, okay. Yeah. I will say like getting back to your question about like how I was able to do it. What I noticed was because I go into the office Thursdays and Fridays, so two days a week. And I noticed that when I would get up and like walk, when I, when I would walk to the train station to take the train, I felt energized. Right. And I follow the Andrew Huberman, get sunlight in your eyes. Depending on which side of the controversy you're on with him, I think the science remains. You should be getting sunlight in your eyes. And yeah. it just, I just felt good about like being in the sunshine. I'm moving my body. I'm walking on my way to work. This is me time. And I started thinking about these ideas of like, I want to help someone. I want to help actors. I want to help artists. I wish I could talk to people and give them ideas and help for things that I wish that I knew, things that I didn't have. Because I've hit six years now mm -hmm. in LA and like I'm, I'm doing it. And I, I recognize that I'm in a bit of a grind myself now of just like the auditions and the networking and the events and like getting myself out there. So I just started thinking like, Maybe I should start writing these down and compiling a list. So I felt energized walking to work. And I tried to capture as much of that energy as I could coming back from work and in my day to day of just like, I love the way that I feel when I'm thinking about this. I want to put this together. I started looking into like YouTube videos and really using all the technology that's available to us now to be like, I can do this. I can self-publish this. I can have something. And this can take me into the next part of my career trajectory. That's great advice. So like somebody who is feeling burnt out at work, basically what I heard you say is you just started walking during these walks. Were you listening to anything or was it silent? Silence. Silence. So you allowed your thoughts to come in during these walks and you started tracing together, okay, day after day, what am I thinking about? And realizing that you had an idea there and that when you were thinking about the idea, even though you were feeling very burnt out from work, you had something that made you feel alive that energized you enough to incentivize you to like, instead of just after work, like vegging out, go do something that actually like lights a fire inside. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you're feeling burnt out, yes, you should definitely allow yourself to rest. But might we offer that taking creativity walks in silence with yourself, allowing the thoughts to come in, taking notes on what comes through when you're on these walks and what makes you feel alive when you think about it, and then considering taking action on one of those ideas. Yeah, I even love that word or that phrase, a creativity walk. 
That's exactly what it is. And when I think about it too, of like, we talk about momentum in our careers or like momentum in our artistic projects. Like this is a physical way of embodying that momentum. Literally, you're putting momentum into your body to physically draw out an idea yeah. from your, your soul. Well, first of all, like, how did you know that this was the kind of book you want to write? And by the way, we have it right here. There it is. A Thousand and One Tips for Actors and Artists in Los Angeles. So cool. So how did you come up with that particular idea? Did the tips come first and then the title? Or like, how did that work? This is a little sentimental, if you'll oh, allow me. I will. My dad is a big book lover. Like, he just loves books. I think it's a bit of a problem. Like, he's got so many books. And growing up, like, I mean, we were around books and then he would like go to the, the thrift store and like get books and give us books. And I always loved the 1001 tip books that he would pull out, like for anything, you know, 1001 this, 1001 that. Mm. And so that sort of genre has always stuck with me with my life. And I know like way back in the day, Jay Leno would like make jokes about these. He's like, if 999 tips didn't work for you, we got one more that could work. So that idea has always stuck with me of this, huh. like, 1,001 tips. I never heard of it before you. I thought you came up with it. You could have really owned that for me. Oh, no. Yeah. I <laughs> no, can't Tim take credit. Tim was the number one. No. He did it. <laughs> There's a whole Let genre. the record state. <laughs> and I, I started thinking, I was like, this could be a really good, because there's there's so many tips out there. Like, everyone has a story. Everyone has a way that you're supposed to go after your dreams in Los Angeles, how you're supposed to make it, how you're not supposed to make it, that sort of a thing. And I thought like a real consumable way of getting good ideas, good actionable tips out there would just be create a bunch of different sections, career development, networking, industry knowledge, and just have a hundred do's and don'ts in each one. Mm. And then people, no matter where they are in their career trajectory, they can pick up the book and be like, you know what? I'm not so good at networking. Why don't I look at the networking section? Or like, I'm really struggling with auditions. Why don't I look in there? And even if you get just one little tip or one little do and don't that you want to focus on, take it from there and, and let that seed grow into something else. And, and you can always come back. Even myself, I'm like, man, like I, I need to work on my elevator pitches because you should really have like a good, concise elevator pitch for who you are, what you do, and the value that you can provide. Lauren, I make podcasts. I can provide $11. There you go. <laughs> Ding. This is my stop. Love it. Here's my card. So this, you have an idea for like doing a tips book because you always like the ones that your dad brought home. But then like, how did you come up? Well, how did you know you were going to do it? Like, because one day you just came up to me and said, I'm writing a book. And I was like, wow. Because, you know, I very like aggressively, like almost too aggressively come up to you like once a week. And I'm like, I just need you to know something. You're supposed to write. You're meant to be a writer. I just need you to know. I have a very strong feeling. And I, I'm going to keep saying it to you because I know you're supposed to be a writer. And sometimes I do get hit with these ideas about what people are supposed to do. And I have to tell you, I've never been wrong so far. So tell me like how you got to the point where you're like, I'm going to write a book. I love writing. You know that. Yeah. I'm always writing poetry. I've got notebooks. I've got little sheets of paper that I fold up and keep in my pocket. And I have pens. And I, I found some of them. <laughs> you found some of my notes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some of my beautiful poetry that yes. I write. I love just the act of writing. And I love bringing something into the world. Mm -hmm. And I think there were a bunch of different things. Because it, it wasn't just me saying okay, I want to write a book now. There really was this like frustration in my soul of like, I've got to do something. And mm. then I think the seed that you planted too of like, I think you're meant to write. I know you're meant to write. Yeah. You should get back to it. And also I like to challenge myself to like produce something by the time my birthday rolls around. Yeah. I don't know why, but like for me, it's a good mark of time for me to look at and be like, I'm about to have existed in this world for a whole nother year. What can I show for it physically, literally? And I didn't have anything at the time. And I mean, I, I had some things that I had worked on and written and done, but nothing that I was truly proud of for that mark of time to be like, this is what I'm, I'm honoring myself with this year. So all of these things kind of came to a head 
at the beginning of June, I want to say, like end of May, beginning of June. And I was just like, all right, I think about this every day when I'm walking to work. I think about these tips. I really want to help people. I'm teaching around Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Unified School District as a teaching artist. I want to make this book and I want to give something back. I want to give something to myself and I want to give something out into the world and help people. This is what it's going to be. That's such a great tip. When creativity is relentless, when it knocks at your door endlessly, eventually you kind of just have to answer the call or else you're going to scream Mm -hmm. (laughs) at at best Mm -hmm. and maybe break down at worst. Also, I love the idea of a creative piece marking your birthday. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a beautiful way to celebrate and to share your legacy. So you decide you're going to make this book. I would like to recommend any creatives who are listening Maybe adopt that because it's. I kind of want to do that now. Plus, it's a great thing. Like, it's my birthday, so you have to support it. Yeah. If you like me, support the book. Built-in marketing. Yeah. I mean, I think that was another reason because there's all kinds of things that you can do for your birthday. And especially as we get older, why shouldn't we still engage with that of like gift giving? Yeah. You know, and, and this is a way of just like, I brought something into the world and you can honor me and we can all celebrate by taking part in it, no matter how you can. If purchasing the book, if you're able to, like that would be amazing. It would help me. It would get it out there. We could celebrate this milestone together. Yeah, I love that. So how did you come up with the tips? Like, did you think, okay, this is something I wish my younger self had known? Like, how did you come up with the sections? And then how did you come up with the tips? I think the sections, it was just kind of like, this is what you should know for each just being an artist. You should know how to develop your career. You should know how to network. You should know how to go out on auditions. You should know about marketing, social media, public relations. And a lot of this stuff, like I am not the best at. So then I had to do further research and be like, okay, so what what is the internet saying? Like, what are other people? What's in the zeitgeist now? What are things that I'm not doing that I know that I should be doing? And from there, like it just kind of snowballed because I would get like things that I was doing that I could teach students now today and be like, you absolutely need to do this. And then just hold up a mirror to myself and what I'm saying and being like, what am I not doing? What am I afraid of and what should I be doing? And that's definitely got to go into the book because it's what everyone should be doing. I want to say one thing because you've been mentioning it's for artists a lot. My parents have also, they're also the proud owners of a thousand and one tips. and. My mom was saying, she's like, I think there's so many great things in here for anyone, regardless of if you're pursuing a creative career. So I think that's an important thing to note. Like, just because you're not in L.A. or you don't consider yourself like an actor or an artist doesn't mean this book doesn't have something for you. And I'm wondering, Timmy, if you could share a couple of your favorite tips from the book and why. Yeah, well, the the elevator pitch that we talked about, I think that that's a big one because in LA specifically, but I'm sure anywhere you go, it's just marketing 101. You know, like people say, just on a level of attraction, people say they they know that they're attracted to you within three seconds of looking at you. So further for marketing, people know if they want to work with you probably within 30 seconds. So if you are able to effectively communicate like, this is who I am, and this is what I do, and this is how I can bring value to you, you've opened yourself up to a job. Yeah. And potential opportunity. So what would that look like? Like for me, for instance, like what would be an elevator pitch? Well, I mean, I think telling people that you're a two-time Webby award-winning podcaster, like you just did that. And so that's hot right now. That's actionable. So reaching out, like getting into another tip, like putting that on social media, getting that word out, maybe even speaking to a publicist, however you can get that word out to build momentum for yourself. Mm. Also, you're one of the most awarded indie podcasters, Mm. I think, in the world. And so, like, that's huge. People should know that. So, like, how can you get that word out? Word of mouth, even even just posting it again and again. I know you've had some guests on your show that talk about advertisers for, like, Burger King or Target and how they run ads on TV. Why should we feel any less shame by promoting ourselves again and again and again and letting people know this is who I am, this is what I do, and by the way, this is how the world has recognized me so far. Right. My initial promise to people though because so we've gotten like how you got the idea, but like how did you do it so fast? Like how did you not 
Because I know you can, some, like we all can, struggle with self-doubt. How did you not talk yourself out of it and just go for it? Like what would be your advice to someone who wants to get something out there and do it quickly but is like, I don't know, is it good enough? I don't know, maybe I should spend more time on it. Like who's going through and like has that kind of self-talk? What would be your advice to them? My initial advice, because I think the bulk of it got done – within like a week because I was again like that frustration and I was like I'm just gonna do it so like just muscling it through like if you have that fire if something comes within you and spurs you on to create something in the moment follow that and listen to it I spent a lot of time editing so like mm. creating the tips that was one thing and then there was a lot of like editing and being like oh man like I already mentioned this tip <laughs> I, have to, I mentioned this tip three times now I have to go back and I have to like edit and come up with new things using the technology that's available talk to text I have not done that and I'm really starting to get into it. And Joanne Legrasso is so proud of you right now. Yeah. Well, that's a big thing here because like <laughs> for me, like I'm I'm very auditory in the way that I can receive information, retain information. Like it's part of the reason why I love theater and right. seeing plays because like I'm hearing words and I'm retaining and like watching the story unfold kind of with my ears in a way. I could just rattle off, you know, like if I sat in front of my computer for an hour and and was just gonna type. I could get a handful of tips written, but if I was just like laying down on my back in front of my computer and just talking and being like, oh yeah, then there's this tip and then there's that tip and then there's this tip and then there's that tip. And the, all the, the while the computer is recording me as I'm dictating, that was a huge help. Okay. So from that, what I got for our sweet listener, if they're frustrated and annoyed with their life and like know they want to put something in the world, instead of like internalizing that fire and turning it on yourself... Let it spew out of you like a creative volcano and into your project and release it into the world, number one. Number two, utilize whatever method of thinking and like collecting your thoughts worked for you. So for Timmy, instead of just like sitting there and typing in front of a computer, he was using voice messaging, voice to text, or you could also do like an audio recording and transcribe it into a a Word document and then edit from there. I've done that many times when I'm doing speeches. I find it so helpful. But that's all to say, like, you don't have to use a traditional method. If it's writing, write. If it's talking text, talk text. Like, find what works for you to get it out as quickly as possible and just get something down. And then you can fix it in the edit process. The hardest part is getting it done. Then you can go in and edit and take extra time with that. That was my biggest thing, like I said, the the editing. And I had to go back. I had to format it a specific way to actually oh, like yeah. get it published. Like That was something I had to teach myself. I also created like an urge to get it done within myself because I made this promise to myself of like, mm. I've got until July 11th, which is my birthday. I've got until 7-11. And so the clock is ticking. I've got to get it out. I remember there were days where I was staying up like late into the night and I would wake up early and I would just be like, I've got to work on this. So there is like time management to it as well. I'm a very traditional writer, I like to think. Like I love putting pen to actual paper and like actually getting the thoughts down. And then, you know, I, I rarely like writing on the computer. But for whatever reason, this project was calling me and it was saying, this is what you got to do for this. This yeah. is how you're going to get it done. Well, it's so beautiful that you listen to it and you didn't just do what you've always done because that's what you've always done. I feel like that's something I'm thinking about a lot lately. Like creative innovation is important within ourselves to not just keep doing things because that has been the process to ask, like, does this serve me in this particular scenario? And if not, like we even have to be utilizing our creativity in how we make our creative projects, mm -hmm. like not just the idea, but also the process has to be creative. Something you said just was so beautiful. You said, like, I made this promise to myself. Mm -hmm. How do you keep those promises sacred? Because I think a lot of times we make promises to ourselves and then we break them and then we lose faith in ourselves and we get in this self-trust rut. How did you make sure you kept that promise? I don't know. And maybe that's the magic of it because I just kind of like going to the gym. I've promised myself that so many times, you know, or like I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to be in the best shape of my life and haven't been able to follow through. But I think that that's the magic of this part of being an artist. Mm. When inspiration touches and you act on it quickly and feverishly, 
and you make a promise, I think then there's some magic spell that happens that binds you to it. And mm. it's like making a pact with the universe and, and both are together on it. And you're both like, I promise I'm going to bring this into fruition. Like I've been so divinely inspired for whatever reason, I promise I will bring this. Now the universe has rewarded me with like a physical copy of, of an idea. Yeah. So you get it done. You figure out the formatting. Also, just let's take a pause for anyone listening who is a writer and really wants to self-publish a book. Could you give them some like brass tacks of things they need to know and like even resources that you use that they can utilize? Yeah. So I was really using YouTube and I unfortunately I can't remember the specific channels or the people that I that I was like looking at, but I know I was pulling from a bunch of different channels and a bunch of different sources and just looking into like the very technical specifics of what it takes to get the format correct in publishing terms of like page breaks and spaces and table of contents and margins. So there, there is very technical things that need to be taken into account. So the sooner you can set that up for yourself, like I, I didn't write this book like that. It was all over the place. It was a jumble. I, I had to like move things around and there's a thousand and one tips yeah. in there and I'm just like oh my god and you're literally right now to be clear talking about spacing on the page in the Microsoft Word document correct correct yeah okay. mm -hmm. yeah and that was like a huge thing so we went to upload it and then everything was all over the place so we had to figure out okay how do I get the spacing correct so that it shows up the way I want it to once it's published yeah but when I went on YouTube like it actually was very easy it did take me a couple hours to like actually get it but the theory behind it was easy to consume and to manage and I was like okay a little bit of trial and error I've got to work with it a little bit but eventually I got it and then I self published it on Amazon which I do recommend. They have a program where you can physically look at the cover of your book and each individual page and see exactly how it's going to be printed. And then once you submit it, this one gets printed out of Las Vegas. It's so cool to, if you end up doing this, because they print each individual copy. And I ordered this and two days later I had it. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that you can take something from your mind, upload it, it was accepted in what, like two hours? I can't remember how many hours. They have a maximum of 72 hours, but I think this was... It was yeah. within a day, right? Yeah, within a day. And mm -hmm. then, like, days later, I ordered this and had it in my hands. That blew my mind because I know with traditional publishing, these things take months, if not years. It's just so inspiring that you can literally create a physical copy of your book that quickly. And if you have an idea for a book and you've been wanting to just get it out there and you don't want to go through the process of like finding a publisher and doing that whole dance. I don't know. I was inspired. I'm like maybe I should write a book. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I recommend anyone. And then as far as the like the actual cover itself, like I was messing around with some things on Canva. I did use ChatGPT and I was like what would be the best layout for this? And it and it said like well for your book that you're putting out and you've got this, we think that this would be a good cover that would really entice a reader to grab it. And so then just based on that, I started creating some some art in Canva. And eventually I did outsource it on Fiverr. I found someone that they were like, I'll blend it really well and I'll make it look nice and professional to the specifications. Because again, I'm on this deadline and I'm like, okay, I can do the writing, but the art... I'm not the best at. So if I can outsource this, that yeah. would be wonderful. They were really fast. I think within a day, too, they were like, here, is this is this good? Is this what you want? And I said, like, that's perfect. Let's go with it. Wow. That's it. That's the book. <laughs> <laughs> it still, it blows my mind. Like, I'm, I'm amazed. And again, like, it gave so much to me. Like, I, I was, you know, a month and a half ago, I was so frustrated. I was downtrodden. And I, and I had this idea. And... I brought it into fruition and now I can be like, wow, I have, I have something. I have a tangible dream of mine Yeah, and I can give it to people and I can share it and I can market it. And this is the beginning of a new step for me because all of a sudden I can combine my love of teaching and education and communication and everything that I've learned here in Los Angeles, being an actor and an artist. And I can now move into that realm of like, let me help other people. So like when this comes out, you will be in the midst of announcing it. 
mm-hmm. finally. Mm-hmm. But it's been a couple of weeks and you've just been kind of like getting your marketing and all those materials together. Just knowing that it's out in the world, what has that given you? It's given me confidence. Mm-hmm. I still can't believe that it's here. It's really happening. And I feel like it's brought me into a new level of business. Something that I taught myself about when I was writing this book is like, wow, I, I've i been in show business for over a decade, but I've never really looked at the business of show business. And now I'm forced to look at the business aspect of show business. And now I'm entering into a whole new level of that business of like, I've got literally a product that is helpful and useful and can bring a lot of value to people in the terms of actionable tips. But now it could sit on the shelf for the rest of my life, or I can actually get out there and share it with people and say like, hey, I've got something that could help a whole community. Wow. So it's made you feel confident and like a businessman. Yeah. Big yeah. business Timmy. Yeah, big time. And like I was <laughs> saying, like it's cool to walk into a room and someone says, what have you been up to? And just to say, well, like, well, I just published a book. And I think that's why we should always be, I mean, we should do it because we'll talk about this later, but it's literally your legacy. Every time you put something out into the world and to build self-trust with yourself and because it feels so good to know you took something from your brain and made it exist mm-hmm. out in the world. But also, when you are continually sharing your work, it will never send a cold sweat down your spine when somebody asks you, what you have you been up to or what's new or what do you do if you're always putting new things out? Like, you can always be like, hey, I just put out a book, actually. I'm really excited. Or, hey, I just put out a song. Or, hey, I actually just finished a painting. Or, I just added this new offering to my business. Being an innovator and being a constant creator It's just good on every level. Okay, so let's get to the next part, which I think is the hardest part when you put something out, at least for me and I think for you too. And that's like the marketing part and actually like sharing it. Because I was thinking about it as you were saying it earlier. You're like, you were talking about, I put out this book and you're like, but does it even exist? Like it's out there, but like it kind of reminds me of if a tree falls in the woods and nobody hears it, did it fall? Mm -hmm. It's like, I believe it did, yes, because it literally did. But if our creativity is put out into the world and we don't share it, does it even exist? Yes, but we do have to take that step to like do the marketing, which can be the hardest part. So tell me about where you're at now, the feelings around it, and we'll go from there. Yeah. So this is definitely the complex power of the human mind because like we just discussed all the beauty of having brought this idea into physical existence and still my mind is doubtful. I'm thinking to myself like, is anybody going to care? Is anybody actually going to buy it? What if it's bad? Like what if people don't like it? What if people think I'm a hack? Like all of these what ifs and they're, they're like negative what ifs. In all purposes, this is a beautiful thing. It's an idea, and it's here, and if you like it, great, and if you don't, great. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, great. And still, there's there's a lot of like doubt swirling around in my mind. And I think the next hurdle is literally just working on myself. Mm-hmm. I, I'm working on myself, and I'm going to be marketing this book at the same time, quieting all those negative thoughts and just saying, like, no, you did it. That was really hard, and you did it, and you've got something. And I already made three sales. Thank you. And I haven't marketed it yet, and I've got, I'm drumming up some interest as well. And the next part is just going to be like, let me learn a new skill. This is something that I've never done before. I've never had a physical copy. I feel like Willie Loman from Death of a Salesman. Like, I, I am about to become a salesman, just shopping it around and saying, like, who's interested? I think there's also going to be power and beauty in that because inevitably, like, there will be people that won't buy it or won't be interested. And then there will be people that are interested and will buy it. I'm going to learn. It's going to be a process. And I think if I can just be on the side of the positive side of this Mm -hmm. as opposed to the negative side, really uplift myself and be like, you've got something, you've done something here. Let's share it. That was all such great advice. I mean, how, when the negative voice does come up, How are you working on like acknowledging it, thanking it and sending it away? I actually just did a episode about this little mini sode. And basically my mini sode was how can you go from I suck to I can't wait to improve. I can't wait to get better. And it's not exactly this, but it's talking about like 
when you start something new, marketing is kind of new to you. You're not going to be amazing at it at first. You have to learn. You have to like allow yourself to have that like painful period of like not knowing, making a mistake, getting better. And if you can keep yourself in the mindset of, I can't wait to get better. I can't wait to learn. Like the way you did with learning how to make this book, Mm -hmm. you're going to be in great shape. So what I do when that negative voice comes up, I now let myself listen to it and ask it, what do you want from me or from me? Mm -hmm. Once it tells me, it's usually something good. And then I say, thank you so much. I don't actually respond to that technique of encouragement. (laughs) Could you try something that is more uplifting? You know, so for instance, like in my instance, I use the negative self-talk that usually comes up for me is you should be doing more. Why aren't you better? You should be further ahead. You haven't done anything. And when I ask that what it wants for me, it wants me to keep going and not give up, Mm -hmm. which is beautiful. Yeah. But that's so mean. I don't need to be belittled in order to not give up. I need you to say, I believe in you. Keep going. That was a long winded way of asking you, have you ask that voice like what it wants for you and if not would you be willing to do that right now and share yeah just as you were talking i think that this is part of the process and i'm learning because i've gotten to that point where i can acknowledge like this is a negative thought if i was to be introspective about it and ask what it wants i can tell that it wants to protect me because i think in my life, like growing up, like I, I was always a scared little kid because I, I had two older siblings and I don't know, I just found where I grew up could be a little rough sometimes. And you've got a really sweet, loving heart that I think sometimes got taken advantage of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sensitive cancer baby. Yes. Yeah. My sweetheart. <laughs> so I noticed as a little kid that like if I was really big or like put myself out there, there was risk of like getting cut down or getting, if anyone puts themselves out there, you take a risk of someone not liking you or taking a shot at you or whatever. So I think that that's exactly what this voice is telling me now about this project of like, hey, don't market it. You did it. You're safe. Like just stay there because here is safe. As opposed to me thanking that voice and being like, thank you so much for trying to keep me safe. But I'm trying to be bigger than who I was yesterday, and I need to put this out there. So thank you for trying, but I'm trying now to do something different with my life. You're welcome back anytime, but like in this instance, it doesn't help me. And you know what? I think sometimes that voice just wants to be heard. Mm -hmm. Like the trouble is that we actually just keep pushing it down and pushing it down and pushing it down instead of like listening to what it actually says and like thanking it. Mm -hmm. And then you can move on and it, it feels acknowledged. It feels like it's like part of it. But you're the wise higher self self sitting at the head of the table instead of your fear or your negative self talk sitting at the head of the table. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's like when I'm breaking it down and really listening to that voice and inviting it in and asking it, Mm -hmm. like it really is driving me. It's being like, I'm going to take over now and this is what we need to do specifically because we want to keep you safe and we want to protect you. There's a place for that. It's not here. Like I I want to grow and evolve. And that that's what this is really all about. Again, like hearkening back to that frustration that I was feeling. It was like, I'm stuck and I feel like there's no room to grow. I've got to do something. And this is what it is. And if this is a byproduct, that voice coming up daily being like, please stay in your lane. Please stay here. That's the next hurdle that I have to deal with. And Hopefully, the goal would be to really acknowledge that, work through it, and get to the other side so that I can do this again. I can write another book and put it out again, and it'll be easier. And I can do more things that when that voice comes in, I'm like, I recognize you. Thank you, but not today. Yeah. I was just thinking not today like might hurt its feelings, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like. <laughs> It's so you're you're welcome here and like I've got us. Mm-hmm. Not to tell your <laughs> you what your your you're thing not should welcome be. Welcome here. But like I feel like anytime I'm like really aggressive toward parts of myself, no matter what they are, it revolts. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you know who was it? Uh, Julia Cameron. Is she the one that famously has said like name this voice yeah so that you can you can give it some substance and really talk to it in a loving way Mm -hmm. i've reflected on that and i believe that the name of this voice his name is george Uh oh yeah he's he's a little french he's got some french in him 
But George, I could be like, George, thank you so much. And then I think there's another voice that is like really like the big one. Oh. And that's not George. But George is this one that is like wanting to protect. Like, please, please. Does he have a little beret? <laughs> But I should draw him. Yeah. I haven't I haven't gotten to that part of like envisioning. <laughs> personifying him. Yeah, him. personifying him. <laughs> but he's he's the doubter. He's the doubter for protection. Aw. Hey creative. If you love the show and it has meant a lot to you, could you do me a favor? Rate and review on Apple. Give it a review on Spotify. Share it with a friend. These things all make a major difference in a podcaster's life and in growing their show. And I really want to build up this community of creatives who love, trust, and know themselves and love, trust, and deeply know others. So if you could do that and share the show with someone you care about, that would mean so much. All right. I love you. Just shifting into another thing real quick. I know you're really big on when creative inspiration hits, do not let it pass you by. Take that inspiration, write it down, put it into a voice memo. Share your thoughts on that. The divine inspiration is literally touching you in that moment and being like, here it is. If you choose not to capture it, you're basically telling the universe, like, again, like George, like, thank you, not now. So the universe is like, all right, well, I'm, I'm trying to like spark you. Like those are sparks. The universe is trying to turn you on. Trying to turn you on, baby. <laughs> but so many times in my life, I've been sparked and I haven't captured it. And then, you know, an hour, two hours, a day goes by and I think like, oh, man, like that was brilliant. I could really do something with that right now because now I have the energy. But the universe was trying to tell me, like, you can't wait for the energy. Like, here, take this now. I've been thinking and reflecting a lot about purpose as an artist. As an actor, sometimes if I'm not cast in something or I'm not actively working on a project, I think like I'm not fulfilling my purpose or I'm, I'm not doing what I should be doing. But I think also those sparks of creativity from the universe is your daily purpose. At least I receive at least one a day. It might not be a grand thing, but it is a spark of creativity. And if I choose not to capture it or not to pursue it at all, then I'm basically rejecting my purpose for that day. Mm. And I'm still sitting asking, like, what's my purpose? How can I be of use? How can I be of service? I'm wasting away here. But usually, very early on in the morning, I'm touched with that purpose for the day. And I, I'm learning now that I can either choose to follow that and be purposeful for the day, or I can reject it and wallow and not follow it. I love that. So the idea that if you are somebody who is living a creative life, your only purpose is to follow the sparks of creativity when they light up inside of you. Maybe. Because think about it, like every day is a gift and you're not promised tomorrow. With this book, for example, like I could say my purpose is to bring the book into fruition. But if I'm not following the divine purpose of the day, which is work on this section and get 100 tips in there, then I'm really not fulfilling my purpose for that day. And so outside of the book, like if I'm looking for something or I'm looking for some purpose, I'm not really allowing myself to be open to the possibility of what could be. Yeah, I like that. I mean, like I have a different thought of purpose, but I love yours. It's kind of similar. Like I think of like writing a book is your passion. Acting is your passion. Teaching is your passion. Your purpose is something much more broad so that you could be doing your purpose when you're sitting there having a cup of tea. So for me, I believe in this moment, my creative purpose is to use my voice to help other people find their voice and creativity. Mm -hmm. And so I can be doing that right now as I'm talking to you. I can be doing that as I walk outside if I see somebody and you know spark up a conversation. I can be doing that when I'm writing a song. There's a million ways to achieve my purpose. It's not like... I have to be a songwriter or else I'm going to die because that is such a limiting viewpoint. Yeah, I agree. And I, I love that idea of purpose that you have. And, you know, who knows? Like maybe it's not necessarily purpose, but there is something there. It's almost like an assignment. Yeah. Like how can you follow the assignment of being a human being, which I think a big part of being a human being is to listen to the creative call. It makes me wonder, you know, that achy question that gets asked when mm. people say, what are you working on right now? 
you will always have an answer because you could say like, oh, well, right now I was touched this morning by this spark of like, there was something that was telling me that I have to come up with lyrics for a song and that's what I'm exploring and I'm interested in seeing where it's going. How interesting is that at a party or among friends or, or wherever in an elevator? If you allow yourself to believe that what you're working on is the divine inspiration that you're touched with each and every day, because I, I'm almost certain that there's something that we get touched with every single day, some spark of creativity, whether you're an artist or not, like you always say, you're divine right as a human being. There is some inner spark of creativity that we all receive every day. Yeah. And we need to be following that. When people ask us, what are you working on right now? It can be a wonderful go-to answer of just like, something has been on my mind all day today. I'm still trying to figure it out. And I'm either going to try again tomorrow or I'm going to let it rest for a little bit and the answer will come to me. I think that's so brilliant. We could do a whole episode about this whole spark idea. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of like following your creative assignment day to day, mm -hmm. using it as a gift. And then when someone asks you what you do or what you're working on, like very specifically telling them like, I just finished a song earlier. Like I never would have thought to do that till this moment, but that, I guess that could be in your next tips book. Yeah. Circling back. Circling back. Baby, any closing thoughts you want to leave my sweet creative cuties with? I would love for everyone to pick up a copy and I would love to get your feedback because I think that this also is a springboard. You know, it's a conversation starter. It's not the foolproof guide. Like you won't become a millionaire by buying this book. But it, it is a springboard into what actionable things am I not doing that I can be doing? And how can I invite other people in my circle or outside of my circle into what I'm doing to help me get to the next level? Yeah. And again, it's not just for people in LA. It's not just for actors, not just for artists. Like anybody who's starting a business is embarking on a creative career or just wants some tips on like how to live a better life, I think could benefit from it. And it is available on Amazon. So everybody go to Amazon, buy it again. It's called 1001 Tips for Actors and Artists in Los Angeles by Timothy Michael Blewett. And make sure to rate and review. I know I say this for the podcast a lot, but it really, really helps build the visibility, build excitement around something. I don't buy things or go see doctors or go to restaurants that don't have a bunch of ratings and reviews. I don't know why, but we really trust other people's opinions, even if we don't know them. So please, if you have a dream, if you have a love, if you know what it's like to put your idea out into the world and really like... You're just like bearing your soul in that way. Support Timmy by rating and reviewing on Amazon, by sharing the book with a friend. It makes all the difference in the world. And again, you're really going to love this. It's super helpful. And who wouldn't want to hear from such a beautiful human? Thank you. So where can they follow you, honey? So you can follow me at the feisty rascal on Instagram. You can see my website, timothymichaelblewett.com. I'll have some information on there um, about my doings in Los Angeles. And the book. And the book. I think I'm going to have to take some inspiration out of my own book and be more active on socials because I recognized again as going through this, I was like, I'm not utilizing this very valuable aspect of marketing. I'm just going to have to get into it and use it as a tool and not let it use me. It's true. Like, look at it like another creative outlet and like, don't think about the outcome of it or like how many people are going to like it. Just think about what could be fun for me to share today? Exactly. It's yeah. going to be so much easier for you and for anyone listening if you're looking at it from that perspective. Yeah. And just it's so important as artists, just a little flash of just like, hey, I'm still here. I'm still doing the thing, even if it is like I made a brilliant coffee this morning or like I really soaked in the sunshine today. Like as an artist, like that's all part and parcel of the job is experiencing life, sharing it and sharing with your friends and family and possible co-workers like i'm here i'm doing it welcome to me so with that thank you so much creative for listening if you like what you heard today remember to rate review and follow the show on apple podcasts spotify or wherever you get your podcasts share the show with a friend send it to them because podcasts are like really built person to person and post about it on social media. If you do post on social media, tag me at Lauren LaGrasso and at Unleash Your Inner Creative and Timmy at The Feisty Rascal, and we will repost to share our gratitude. 
And also remember to rate and review Unleash Your Inner Creative. It helps so much. That's how you tip your podcasters. That's how you help this show grow and help this community of amazing creatives continue to share their heart with the world. Thanks to Rachel Fulton for helping edit and produce this episode. You can follow her at Rachel M. Fulton. Thanks to Liz Full for the show's theme music. Follow her at Liz Full. My wish for you this week is that if you have a creative dream or idea on your heart, don't overthink it. Do it and release it into the world like Timmy. May we all follow our creative sparks. And we would like to say just one thing to you. We We love love you and and we we believe believe in in you. you. I'll talk with you next week.